scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that so, man planted by you. the rivers Please of water. People, your leaves are forever to going to bear. And five, we know that your, your season will not you pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever be too. Give your we have a lot of content to share with you. No so we would entreat you to subscribe to, to this channel as well as like heart, us. Says, Hit that notification bell, bell to receive to more updates from us because we know that whatever pray, content here is going to fail. set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you obtain whatever stature that cries in your Madonna. spirit with your heart open father grace grace someone is praying shale sabra ta shale gabara ko sade baleto sabra ta ka to parato skabra ta ke bereko skabra ta ke bereke to kabra ta skade bereke ba terra ka ta barato sabra skade bereko skedi embra ka ta barato skoto bereke ke bereke do ingra ta ke de bereke to skata pra skata bala ta pra te ke bereko Kada bala kada prada kada pras kada bala kusa pras kada pras kada bala kusa pras kada bala kusa pras
in the name of Jesus. We are still praying. The Bible says, and the Spirit helpeth our infirmities. The word infirmities there means the limitations that come by reason of wearing a mortal body. Then it says, for we know not how to pray as we ought to. But it says the Holy Spirit can make intercession for us because he sustains the ability to intercede for us according to the will of God. And John in his epistle said, this is the confidence that we have that when we ask anything according to his will, that he heareth us. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare. I declare. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Upon my destiny. Upon my Open destiny. your mouth and begin to pray. Consuming everything. Consuming everything. That has not been planted by our Father. Fresh fire. Sabra the overflows, make sure you are praying. Connecting online, make sure you are praying upon my destiny. Shanda Taka Barakatos, Laka Braska, the 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 Bible says, and as they prayed and fasted, the Holy Ghost said to them, not to him. While they were praying with fasting, the Holy Ghost spoke in a way that everyone heard him. You are going to pray. Father, I obtain the hearing ear and the seeing eye. The hearing ear and the sea in the name of Jesus open your mouth the hearing ear he the heart and ear let him hear what the spirit say to the church Hearing the the hearing ear, the seeing Hey, 
Pray. Pray. The spirit is always winning. In the name of Jesus, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 says, Be anxious for nothing. It says, But in everything, not some things, in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, it says, Let your request be made known. Let your request be made known. I'm going to give you the next one minute as a final prayer point to lift up your voice and cry to your father that which you desire him to do tonight this is my night oh God go ahead and pray go ahead and pray for everyone that ask and receive everyone that ask and receive for everyone that ask and receive everyone that ask and receive he said if you be evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your heavenly father give the holy ghost to them that ask him not to them that ask you to them that ask him he said he that told you have asked for nothing ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full for in Jesus mighty name we pray for in Jesus mighty name we pray for in Jesus mighty name we pray Spirit of the Sovereign Lord come and make your presence known reveal the glory of the risen Spirit of the Sovereign Lord Come and make your presence known, reveal the glory of Father, we pray tonight that you will breathe upon us. We have come as men hungry for more. We have come as people desperate for all of you. We submit to the wisdom of your word. We submit to the ministry of the spirit and we pray that tonight will be an encounter for every one of us glorify jesus in and through our lives for in jesus mighty name we pray for in jesus mighty name we pray please give jesus a big hand clap and then you may be seated hallelujah hallelujah 
I welcome everyone in the name of Jesus, the head of the church, and I salute all those who have come expressing their hunger. So many people sitting, standing outside, and it's an expression of your hunger and desperation. I want to assure you in the name of Jesus that not one of you will be disappointed tonight. The Bible says, He that you have asked for nothing, it says, Ask and you shall receive, that your joy may be full. Hallelujah. He will never call the sons of Jacob to seek him in vain. Every time he calls us together, it is because a table has been prepared for us. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Um, we'll perform a function very quickly and then we'll get to the business of the night. Hallelujah. But first and foremost, let me just honor um, the great men and women of God that we have in our midst. We're a house of honor. Hallelujah. He just stepped in not too long while we're praying. Please help me honor Reverend Dr. Joshua Tende. Bless him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you so much. I will honor you. Our father, Daddy Tula, again, and mommy, please give them a big hand clap. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And um, Reverend Ubanduma and his dear wife, so good to see you. Blessings to them. Dr. Anointed, please let's give him a big, big, big God bless you. Is this the best you can do? Hallelujah. And if you are a man or a woman of God here or outside anywhere scattered, we honor you in the name of Jesus. And we pray that the Lord himself will do you good tonight in Jesus' name. Still appreciating people, we have Lieutenant Cornell Anthony. God bless you again. Thank you so very much. We have our father and our mother, Professor and Dr. Mrs. Onu. Let's give them a big hand clap. Hallelujah. And every other person, if I didn't do justice, please forgive me. May the Lord honor you. Oh, I just spotted. God bless you. The Lord honor you in the name of Jesus, man of God. Thank you. Hallelujah. I believe you came with your prayer request. I have um, a charge for us before we pray. So please, if you are yet to write your prayer request, do so. Especially for those outside, ushers and um, protocol, you may need to assist them when necessary so that we have the prayer requests on ground. So when it's time to receive, you'll be a seamless process. There are quite a number of people. Hallelujah. My final charge to us tonight um, is captioned in a topic that I call equipping the saints. Equipping the saints according to Ephesians 4 from verse 10. I'm teaching and charging our hearts tonight on the topic equipping the saints. Equipping the saints. Hallelujah. Let's read Ephesians 4. I'll read verse 10 down to 14. The Bible says, He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might feel all things. Speaking about Jesus now. Then the Bible says, He gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. 12 says, For the perfecting, other versions like um, maybe standard English or many other modern versions will say the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. 13, it says, till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. 14 the last verse that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie to deceive hallelujah the bible very clearly shows us that manifesting the possibilities of this spirit life demands training please i want you to listen very carefully manifesting the limitless possibilities 
that are captured in this spirit life this faith life this kingdom life we have been called into demands training that in as much as access has been given to us by Christ and through Christ the Bible demands that in walking in the reality of these possibilities there will be need for quality training hallelujah that means the believer even though saved if he does not have access to a teaching priest and an opportunity where he or she is methodically mentored to understand spiritual things chances are excellent that in spite of all the provisions that Christ provides for that believer he may not be able to enter into the fullness of that kingdom experience Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 it says and I will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart it says they shall feed you with knowledge and understanding hallelujah they shall feed you with knowledge I will give you pastors because of my determination to see you trained so that you will be able to gain mastery over the things of the spirit I will give you pastors according to my heart in Psalm 18 Psalm 18 from verse 32 to 34 Psalm 18 from verse 32 to 34 it says it is God that girded me with strength and make it my way perfect next verse it says he make it my feet like hinds feet and set it me upon my high places this is the verse of emphasis now 34 he teacheth my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken by my arms look at this level of mastery i didn't just assume that state of mastering the spirit that i was taught now by the lord are we together men can be taught to gain mastery even over spiritual things very interesting scripture that has become an anthem here is found in acts chapter 18 from verse 24 popular scripture the bible talks about a certain jew called apollos the bible says he was born at alexandria an eloquent man mighty in scriptures he came to ephesus reading to 28 the bible says this man this man was instructed in the way of the lord very powerful introduction his eloquence his might in scripture came as a result of his submitting himself to be instructed in the way of the lord the bible says being fervent in spirit he spake and taught diligently the things of the lord sadly knowing only the baptism of john next verse the bible says he began to speak boldly in the synagogue whom when aquila and priscilla had heard they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly so from the beginning of his journey even up until the point of mastery he was instructed he was guided are we together someone instructed him to have gotten that far and when other people discern his limitations they lovingly called him and said listen if instruction and mentorship brought you thus far it will be what will advance you further the bible says they called him to themselves and they expounded the way of the kingdom more perfectly hallelujah if we do not have access to training we may never be able to attain onto a state of mastery in the spirit the reason why many believers camp around the corridors of redemption and never press to manifest the realities that are captured in this life we have been called into is because many of them do not have their growth methodical to grow methodically means that you are guided line upon line precept upon precept are we together most believers freelance their understanding about God let me tell you this there is a way the believer was designed to know God and if you route the knowledge of God outside of that pattern your knowledge will be inaccurate are we together 
I gave an example a few days ago while I was teaching in Lagos and I told them I said imagine a student imagine a student that goes to the faculty of medicine to take lectures on Monday then decides to go to faculty of arts on Tuesday then decides to go down to Congo to take another lecture you see there is no knowledge that student is receiving that is a waste but at the end of it that student cannot be accredited and awarded a degree do you know why his met his knowledge is not methodical his freelancing knowledge that are useful but cannot be combined for his overall success this is how many believers are learning God so a little here a little there and it is not line upon line and at the end of it the picture that that template of pursuit gives about God is not complete, it's not holistic. There is a way the believer was designed to learn God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He was not just saying, I am the way, and I am the truth, and I am the life. He was showing a spiritual sequence that I am the way, and when you follow me as the way, I lead you into reality, the truth. And that that truth you know will administer life unto you he was not just saying I am the way and then I am the truth I am the life he was describing the pathway that leads to life that the pathway that leads to life starts from identifying the way and if you follow the way the pattern it leads you to the truth reality and when you carry that substance of reality it will administer life the ultimate goal is life but to access life you start with the way then the way leads you to the truth then the truth grants you access to life are we together you can clearly see the difference between a believer who has submitted himself to training very intelligent training when you keep a believer even though both of them two believers saved and you look at the, the quality of their Christian experiences, you would see that one who may have submitted himself to quality spiritual training, the possibilities that come out of that life will differ by far from the believer who is freelancing his or her knowledge about God. Training is very important. Training produces mastery. Training produces mastery. Please do not forget this training in any field this is not just a spiritual concept masters are people who have submitted themselves over an extended period of time to intense training in Acts chapter 2 and verse 42 this was the pattern we see in the early church the Bible says and they Acts 2 42 give it to us they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayers what was the result 43 and fear came upon every soul and many wonders were done by the apostles verse 44 it says and all that believed together had all things in common they were not just divergent imagine if the believers got saved and everybody was freelancing his knowledge there would be serious confusion within the body of Christ it was that they are coming together to be methodically trained by these chief apostles was what produced synergy in their understanding are we together you see that at the same time when you read your your Bible you would see that there was an outpouring of the Spirit the early church they were living a community life and growing powerfully but there were certain disciples in Acts chapter 19 who were being trained by someone else and all the scope of their training they were clearly in isolation to what was happening and they knew only the baptism of John the Bible says Paul having passed through the upper coast Acts chapter 19 and verse 1 the Bible says that he came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples disciples they were under mentorship but it was not holistic because they isolated themselves from the larger activity that was happening and he said have you received the holy ghost since he believed and they responded they said we've not even had if there be any holy ghost and paul was surprised 
he says unto what baptism then were you baptized and they said the baptism of john and he said no 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 the baptism of john was the baptism of repentance saying to the people that they should believe on him who should come that is on jesus christ and having explained it to them the bible says that he prayed for them he laid hands on them and every one of them received the holy spirit they prayed in the spirit they prophesied and the number of them were 12. hallelujah you never attain unto a state of mastery in the spirit until and unless you are trained i wrote down here training exposes you to the knowledge required for victory please listen before you write training exposes you to the knowledge required for victory while minimizing error and waste the value of training is that it distills the knowledge that is useful and minimizes if not totally avoiding error and waste now you can write that training exposes you the believer to the knowledge the body of truth required for victory while minimizing error and waste that means it immediately suggests that there are many many spiritual information that are useless as far as the overall excelling of a believer is concerned just because it is spiritual does not mean it is needed in your life are we together the bible has a concise capture of the kind of knowledge you need to learn god and to live a victorious life but the spiritual information found in the bible is not the only spiritual information that exists in the spirit realm you can route through other channels other information at the end of it they will produce something else not god are we together now there are many other books that were written and are still being written spiritual in context but as far as the knowledge of God is concerned and your overall excellence as a believer is concerned, that knowledge is absolutely useless. But you see, when you begin a blind pursuit for spiritual things without being trained and guided, chances are excellent you will stumble across a lot of spiritual information that will wow you. And for many years you will pride in the accumulation of this information except that they will not sustain the power to administer life. The Bible says ever learning and never coming into the knowledge of the truth so what did they learn what was the name of what they were learning if they were not coming into the knowledge of the truth it means they were learning a lie it says to be careful what you call light lest it be darkness are we learning training exposes you to the knowledge that makes for your victory required for manifesting your victory while minimizing error and waste Zaria is a prophetic training ground I was sharing with the leaders yesterday where God builds and raises people if you find yourself in this place either as a result of study or work or prophetic instructions I want you to know that God has brought you to a place that is a training ground a training ground means where you are sharpened you gain mastery you may have heard me say it and it bears repeating that the stage is not where you train the stage is not for amateurs are we together now the stage is a testament that you have been trained and vetted and accredited and now god can give you an opportunity to be a blessing even though learning continues but that there is a threshold of mastery that you have gained so that you do not become an embarrassment to the name of the lord the stage is not for rehearsals the wilderness is the place of rehearsal. Moses was being trained in the palace and because the location was wrong, the job was bad. Moses' training in the palace ended up being a waste. God had to relocate him to the wilderness for his training to be proper. There were many things because you don't receive training in a palace. The wilderness was designed. You ask military people, they will tell you, when you go to the school of infantry they simulate the environment to be able to build capacity am i right on that even though that military man will later become a general and have all kinds of aids around him he may enjoy the blessings when he becomes a general 
it will be a foolish military man respectfully speaking who would just go to nda and express uh, and want luxury at the same time he wants to sit down on the same chair the general is sitting on are we together it doesn't work that way if you happen to see the training of people in nda you will think those training them were wicked because it looks like there is a messless and brutal training they crawl through grounds they jump through ropes they do all kinds of things even at the point of injury it does not look like the trainer is touched because that's how he became a master himself are we together yes now many believers do not want to submit to training because of our our appetite our appetite for comfort and comfort is a good thing except that the bible says that every man that strives for mastery listen carefully he said he is not crowned unless he strives lawfully nobody wins the olympic by mistake you do not see a world champion an olympian a world champion just strolling around maybe kicking footballs or just moving a few meters and then he goes to stand to compete do you know that everybody that comes to run an olympic final was the best in their locality and yet somebody will still take the last position are we together yes the training of a champion when you come to the school of the spirit there is a way god builds faith in men there is a way grace comes to men watch the way the anointing is made the anointing oil you do not just go and pluck olive and start eating no there is a a, a system of crushing is from that crushing that the oil now begins to come believers hear me let me tell you there is the season that some of us are in now may look like a it may negate the truth of scripture because it does not yet appear the things that you read in scripture and your life may not seem to match and because satan is a master of the sense realm he may deceive you into believing that you are not making progress the bible says in romans chapter 8 from verse 18 it says for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us are we together even jesus your jesus you would think because he came as the word incarnate supernaturally i mean why would jesus take 33 years as a savior was he that weak to have allowed that length of time you would imagine that you would have even landed as an adult conquered satan if is it not death nail my hand and let me die and resurrect and be on my way out of this place no it's interesting that jesus had to be born as a baby because the last adult God created messed up a lot of things he came without growth now Jesus had to come as a baby and he began to grow at age 12 the word went to learn scriptures the word incarnate the Bible says he went to sit down under the scribes and the Pharisees learning the things that he would soon abolish but he still submitted himself and for 18 years Jesus was about learning because the Bible would tell us that he entered the temple as his custom was. Are we together now? Submitting himself to training. At age 30, now he's ready for ministry and he goes to meet John the prophet who now baptizes him and releases him. He now further goes to the wilderness again to fast and pray for 40 days tempted of the devil then the bible says he returned in the power of the spirit and the next thing we hear is a manifestation like an inferno he literally took all the decapolis everywhere the value of training are we together and even with that training he almost gave up at gethsemane and yet there are many people who think all there is to destiny actualization is downloading the blueprint of their prophetic destiny and just because you are now aware that you have been called to be a prophet an apostle a pastor an entrepreneur we just imagine that the awareness of the destination automatically guarantees arrival no sir 
no sir knowing where you need to go to is excellent but building capacity capacity that if you faint in the day of battle the bible says it is because your strength is small are we together so many believers do not submit themselves to training there are many people respectfully speaking jumping and rejoicing god has called me to be a man of god i'm going to go around the world but you look at them and the only thing they have is just the picture of where they are going to there is nothing they are doing they are not walking by the spirit to build the kind of stamina and capacity the bible says an heir as long as he's a child is that in your bible that he differed nothing from a slave but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed hallelujah yes even john who would later manifest as a prophet a major part of his life was in the wilderness eating locusts and wild honey the mother of john did not have the opportunity to enjoy her child how about samuel who later became a mighty prophet that none of his word fell to the ground all his life was spent in the temple do you know what it means to give birth to a child and carry that child and donate that child to god as a baby he slept in the presence of god when his colleagues were running around playing little children there's no record that Samuel had the opportunity to play with other children and other colleagues. A major part of his childhood was sacrificed because of the prophetic destiny. No wonder his word did not fall to the ground. Samuel was such a powerful prophet that if you saw him, it was as though you had seen God. When Saul lost their donkey, they were advised to go and see him. That there is a seer. We know that if we see him, an end will come to this men can become like god when they allow god to train them let me tell you the truth you can manifest godlike capacities not just believe not just agree theoretically that you should the experience of that godlike dimension is manifested at the place of training jesus mentored his disciples more than crusades that he had when you study your bible the, the crusades that Jesus had that were recorded in scripture were countable. A major part of his ministry was invested training those who would become the apostles of the Lamb. And even with that training, he still told them, tarry in Jerusalem. In Acts chapter 10, in Matthew chapter 10, when you read from verse 1, he commissioned them and you would think that was a license to go and start. Gave them power against unclean spirits and to do all kinds of things verse 7 he says as ye go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand prove the validity of that kingdom by healing the sick by casting out devils verse 8 says cleansing the lepers raising the dead casting out devils freely you have received freely give the bible says they went and they returned with a report they said even the demons were subject to us he said no that is not your pride you just rejoice that your names are written in heaven let the lecture continue and he acted as if they did not do anything to the point that when jesus rose from the dead ascended to heaven when he was crowned king and lord he returned back and it's over a period of 40 days he still gathered them he said let the lectures continue the power of training many believers want to become masters please listen to me this is a very powerful message so that you do not waste your impartation believers deceptfully believe that the anointing generically makes people indefinitely powerful regardless of training no the size of the vessel matters the vessel can reveal the potential of the oil if the vessel is small the oil can look small the problem is not the oil the problem is the kind of container carrying it the prophet said i know the reason why you are having limitations he said go and borrow vessel expand your capacity borrow not a few see there are many people who would not allow themselves to be trained by the spirit we run away from seasons of training and we clamor for manifestations especially our generation listen this is a call to be cautious 
there is always seed time and harvest there is always seed time and harvest when God wants to show you mercy he can bring acceleration to your seed time but that seed time you will pass through it there is a law of process when Elisha came and met the woman in Shunem he told her according to the time of life it is still a miracle but I submit that miracle to the sequence of life and John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing are we together training is powerful there are many many business people today who are not able to excel because they had desires and they freelance knowledge but they were not trained there are many preachers today who desire to do so much for God at a global scale their hearts very open but they were not trained blessed are your eyes for they see these things blessed are your ears for they hear these things Jesus knew the value of training and he told them tarry and whilst they were waiting over a period of 40 days he still came and taught them on the matters of the kingdom look at the ratio of training to outpouring three and a half years to one day you see that we waste a lot of impartation in church because there are people who are not trained we have flipped the ratio and impartation is happening every day upon people who are completely bankrupt of training so it's just like pouring oil on the ground we may fall and stand up we may shake and shout all of these things may happen and the same people stand up and there is no testament of mastery because there was no training is someone learning yes sir once upon a time the same apostles of the lamb who had now gained mastery laying hold on eternal life as the bible will put it they went to heal an epileptic patient and they embarrassed themselves so painfully it was such an embarrassment and they returned back and said why couldn't we do this jesus i thought we were already masters and he looked at them paraphrasing there is still a lot you need to learn there are many kinds you are now learning the kind you met on your way there was a dynamic that you engaged that made the demons go remember they were happy even the demons were subject in your name and they still use that formula and for this case it looked like nothing happened and jesus said there is something the problem is not the demon there is something that needs to happen to you jesus i know Paul I know the demons never question power the demons never question the name the demon questioned the individuals administering the power it was not he said Jesus I know there is a testament in the spirit we know the name even the demons know that name and they tremble but someone else comes to use that same name I adjure you by Jesus and the demons say it doesn't work like that leave this place how do you call the name of Jesus correct Jesus genuine name and a demon beats you is that not a lesson to learn that means the name is not a charm there is something there is a level of understanding that the vessel administering that name must have to release the power that is locked in the name watch this I can carry this phone and give one of our little ones here and he can be holding a phone that has capacity to do so much but because of ignorance either by age or knowledge the person can be standing with a phone and not be able to make a call and you will wonder look at this person is shortchanging himself or herself because the vessel really matters listen I know that we are focused on the various forces that provide victory for the believer but we need to concentrate on the vessels who will administer that if the vessels were not important Jesus would just die resurrect and just choose people he would not choose people before after his uh, before his resurrection he would choose them after his resurrection after all it did not matter only the name or only the blood but he began the training while they were waiting for all of these forces of redemption to be given to them preacher it will not just happen just by opening your bible and closing it and then declaring demons leave you may be disappointed like stated in the bible it may not always be just by believing that things will just manifest like that there is a capacity requirement are we together now a capacity requirement and that comes through training because there are some of us 
part of the global missions that will usher in the Christ. Some of us, God is preparing us right now in this training ground and God is going to be sending you like the foxes of Samson across the nations of the earth. But you will be a casualty to the body of Christ if you are not trained. You see, the lopsidedness in your training will be evident by the time you manifest. If you don't stay to be trained properly, the areas that you did not cover in your training will be very evident. There will be a widespread lopsidedness. For instance, if you are trained in prayer and you are not trained in other dimensions, how the provisions of God comes. Are we together? How to access favor from men. You will be surprised that by the time you start ministry, you will be a mighty prayer warrior. But poverty will make you look as if you are fake. And you will be surprised. I am praying. I am sincere. Why are the supplies of heaven not coming? Or reverse the case. You may be properly taught in the area of accessing the wealth of the kingdom. And you will find out that your spiritual life is lean. You do not have power and capacity in the spirit. One manifestation of darkness will take everything you have accumulated over a lifetime because there was lopsidedness in that training. Is someone learning? We are called to gain mastery. We are not called to guess. The precepts of the kingdom that make great are defined. And if you can be methodically trained, line upon line, precepts upon precepts i like how the bible puts it it says now are we the sons of god but it does not yet appear it is not the reality it is the appearance we're talking about that now it is a fact that we are the sons of god but the manifestation of the same for our world to see will be subject to training when you hold a seed watch this when you hold a maize seed or beans or whatever it is you hold it and you look at it there are many trees you are holding are we together but you cannot eat the fruit there you, you don't you cannot even count the number of trees that are in that seed but you have to plant it water it and patiently wait and then it grows and now starts to bear fruit and many other seeds come from that one seed that is how it is Are we learning now let me charge us along let me charge us along three secrets equipping the saints haven't drawn our minds to the fact that if believers are not trained they will not excel as far as this faith adventure is concerned I want to talk about three areas and three things that I truly believe are kingdom secrets that can turn anyone for that matter to become a giant in the spirit. Number one, the power of a systemic prayer life. Please write it down. The power of a systemic prayer life. Please underline the word systemic. Many people teach on prayer. Many people pray. Many people talk about prayer. But many believers have not been able to draw the richness that is captured in the prayer ministry. Largely because their prayer life is not systemic. In Acts chapter 3 and verse 1, we are considering the power of a systemic prayer life. Acts chapter 3 and verse 1 let's read together ready one to read now peter and john went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer somebody said the hour of prayer the hour of prayer there was a time dedicated it became a ritual it became habitual they even named it the hour of prayer you see the power of prayer it's not just in the activity alone but the consistency the consistency of that fellowship now i've taught you that prayer achieves many things in the life of the believer let me quickly do a recap for you there are four four things that prayer achieves in the life of the believer according to scripture number one prayer is a channel for fellowship and transformation 
fellowship and transformation I think that is Luke 29 did I get that right and verse 9 or thereabout the Bible says and as he prayed the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glistering so prayer was given primarily as a tool for fellowship that culminates to our transformation transformation is the name given to the process that makes you Christ-like in experience it says my little children of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you so that is the first biblical assignment of prayer as a tool for fellowship and transformation number two prayer is a tool or a platform to make petitions and obtain requests prayer is a platform to make petitions and obtain requests the bible says that should be matthew chapter 11 i believe and verse 24 jesus was teaching on the subject of faith and then he veers off to talk about prayer mark is it mark help me mark mark eleven twenty four. he said what things soever ye desire when ye pray did i get that right Bel believe that ye receivest them and thou shalt have them so there is a prayer request called what things soever no matter what it is it says when ye pray believe that thou receivest them and thou shalt have them hallelujah philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 we read it earlier on it says to be anxious for nothing it says but in everything by prayer and supplication let your request be made known to god so prayer is a platform for making petitions and obtaining requests number three prayer is a platform for creation and spiritual legislation prayer is a platform for creation and spiritual legislation god is not the only person you talk to when you pray in prayer you can talk to things in prayer you can talk to spirits you are given the liberty to use the platform of prayer and create possibilities in your life are we together even god who call it the things that be not as though they were you can create spiritual possibilities you can make decrees it says and thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established not unto everybody unto the one who made the decree thou shalt decree a thing your Bible says where the word of a king is, there is power. So prayer is a platform that allows you to create possibilities, program possibilities in your life. Finally, prayer is a platform for warfare and intercession. Prayer is a platform for warfare and intercession. Warfare, establishing the victory of Christ over your life and warding of the forces, the arsenals of darkness that continue to fight the speakings of God over your life. These are, among others, I believe, the four biblical assignments of prayer in the life of the believer. But you see, your prayer life will not be rich until it is systemic in the case of the apostles they had the hour of prayer and the bible calls it the ninth hour in the life of jesus we find his prayer life the bible gives us a picture of his prayer life in mark chapter 1 from verse 34 look his busy schedules and see how he was able to carve out a systemic approach to his prayer life mark 1 let's begin our reading from verse 34 mark 1 34 help us media the bible says and he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils this is from his crusade now he suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him 35 we're reading to 37 the bible says and in the morning rising up a great while before day he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed this was a a a habitual practice of jesus because his day was full of activities 
you need to picture the life of Jesus everybody thronging upon him moving from city to city and he did not have that time to pray in the afternoon but early in the morning it was a habit the apostles also started learning it the Bible says Simon and they that were with him followed after him Jesus was not just prayerful he was systemic with his prayer look up please many believers are not able to excel and enjoy the wealth and the blessings that come with the prayer ministry because we have not created a systematized approach to prayer we largely freelance our prayer or motivated by the reality of a situation that challenges you then you may now give some attention are we together Believers were never designed to pray only during emergencies. Believers were never designed to pray only during needs. Believers were never designed to pray only when you have a program. The Bible says in Luke 18 and verse 1 that he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. 1 Thessalonians 5 17 he says to pray without ceasing. It doesn't mean pray from morning till night. It means be consistent in your prayer. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to listen very carefully. Let's assume that you are a student in any of the higher institutions of learning here. Because of the nature of your life and the face of life that you are in, you may have a bit of luxury of time because your focus will largely be schoolwork and then you have the luxury of time. And it is possible to pray at any time once you are not having your lectures you may have fellowship or just your personal time but now fast forward imagine that that same student now becomes a worker say in an oil and gas company you use that student template they will first suck you out of the work are we together now and when they throw you away both your spiritual life and your means your stream of income will both dry up you have to reinvent a system that now suits the current context of your life this is the problem with many believers you had the luxury say for instance you were not married at that point you had the luxury you could lock up yourself for three days you didn't need to obtain permission from any man as a woman you can lock yourself and pray now you are married you are a wife probably a mother you have other responsibilities that luxury of freelancing your prayer life is no longer there because being prayerful will not be an excuse for failing in your family life are we together so you have to now create a system it takes intelligence to pray effectively not just spirituality that intelligence component is where believers have thrown it away we just have a blind zeal there needs to be intelligence when you study your life and you find out the way that God works with you, if you are a leader and you have a lot of commitment towards people, you would want to maximize your night times, you want to maximize your mornings. In principle, I have found the night times to be the best for me for various reasons. Because it affords you a greater sense of focus. Are we together now? There are moments where you can take dedicated times out, maybe a whole day, but generally speaking there are certain levels of growth i'm saying this sincerely ask any great leader they will tell you the convenience of prayer right now for them was not the way it used to be years ago if you are to be honest because of the responsibilities that have come upon that person you can be praying and someone comes to disturb you now you are living in the same house with five of your relatives and while you are praying the one who is not born again is enjoying himself and playing one song and just when you want to position your your heart and you are in the same house you can't drive them remember you are trusting god for the salvation of that person are we together or while you are trusting god to increase you now you live in a house where you are a christian and you are surrounded say by non-christians and certain liberty of expression that you may have you understand you can shout you can roll you can do everything now you are limited in many ways listen believers 
you will not grow spiritually and you will not be rich in your prayer life until you study your life and in partnership with the Holy Spirit design an effective template that insists that you do not compromise on prayer regardless your schedule because the devil is a master at giving you a justification I'm busy you know the way my life is and two days becomes one week becomes one year and before you know it you will simply be admiring the days when you used to be prayerful and there are consequences according to scripture when believers do not invest time to pray you have bought the potential for quality fellowship with the spirit of God and then all of these things that I mentioned will no longer be found in your life is someone learning you want to gain mastery in training any believer you have to train them to understand the power of a systemic or systematized prayer life there are people who come to pray and you know they say a lot of childish things plus Jesus minus Satan and that's the end of it that's the prayer or they say what we know to be the Lord's prayer as a pastor of a ministry that's your entire prayer life no you can't walk that way are we together no wonder the life that should emanate as we speak as we preach and as we lead is not there and you find out that there's a lot of energy that is being dissipated but the life component that is ignited through a rich prayer life is not there for instance you can hear a preacher preach preach sincerely and what he's saying is not a lie except that your spirit bears witness that there is information but there is no life and life there does not mean flying up and down there is there is the strength let me tell you a healthy secret place cannot be hidden no it's not about the huskiness of your voice it's not about auditory there is a signature of life that is upon your speakings you cannot pretend a healthy prayer life no you cannot act and pretend a healthy prayer life believers hear me zaria hear me if you do not understand the power of prayer you will give evil the right and the credence to reign over territories when men do not know how to pray and subdue territorial powers we are talking of advanced levels of prayer where it's not just needs you are standing like a watchman over a territory and insisting allowing the things that must happen within a territory or disallowing it by the authority that you have are we together yes sir there are controlling spirits across territories that manipulate the thinking of people causing them to act in certain ways that are antichrist it is the responsibility of the believer within that territory did the bible not say in matthew chapter 5 jesus teaching from verse 13 to 16 he says you are the light you are the light of zaria believers hear me he says you are the salt of the earth the, the assignment of the salt is twofold one to add taste or value number two to preserve you are not salt if you are not contributing towards your prayer life in the name of Jesus we stand here as salt darkness will not reign over Zaria it's not just when you gather as a prayer group it's not just when you gather here in Koinonia it must become a lifestyle to make your contribution as far as sanitizing the territory to make the purposes of God find a free course it says I Paul desire to come to you once and again but Satan hindered us if Satan can hinder men, he can hinder things. Things like many manifestations of favor coming to you can be hindered. Is someone learning? I made up my mind that my environment will always remain an environment of pro-advancement, an environment that makes it conducive for the purposes of God to find expression. Believers, hear me. In the name of Jesus, you must have a systematized prayer life. As a father over your family, you must have a systematized prayer life. You see, our parents used to practice something called morning devotion. I know that that may not really be enough to give you a robust spiritual life, but it was better than nothing. 
even though it was just five ten minutes of just sharing briefly it was consistent and many of us the bank of spiritual knowledge that we have came from that experience you would find out that they just spent 10 minutes in a day in truth i will tell you you will need more than that if you want to attain stature in the spirit but it is still better than nothing and don't forget that they were working with the limit of the knowledge they had so god would vet them based on the knowledge available for them they made the most they made sure that every month they bought you devotional remember or every year there were others that were yearly there are others that were monthly they insisted whether you liked it or not and remember sometimes you will not do it for two weeks then you will repent like i used to do and then cover all the ones that you didn't do then backslide again hmm. but now you must get to a point where you have the prayer ministry as a revelation listen prayer is not all about power prayer is about negotiating with the realm of the spirit to manifest possibilities it's not just all about anointing uh -uh. Are we together do not allow the devil to destroy your loved ones under your watch do not allow the devil to to invade a territory under your watch do not allow yourself to be bankrupt listen in the name of Jesus may it never happen that the time will come in Zaria where there is no longer evangelism people are not being saved people are not being healed people are not being delivered that the churches are now facing all kinds of pain persecution no increase in membership may it never happen under our watch in the name of Jesus it is our responsibility to stand and to pray it says they are taken for a prey and none say it restore hallelujah to pray we are preparing for a UK conference right now and there is prayer happening every day every day non-stop until the conference time because taking a flight and going there is not what you need God is sending you as an agent of revival there are age-long spirits that predated even your arrival you're not just going to stand there and speak English no the Bible says every time you see men there are two laws working in them number one is the law of sin and death and the assignment is to work in partnership that there is a superimposition the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus it will take more than good English it will take more than a good sermon it says I when I came to you I didn't come with the excellency of speech you want to see nations submit to the power of God you want to see the manifestation of the power of God sweep nations we are not just talking about car, having a car and a house and personal needs we are talking of a time where by reason of your alignment God can trust you with the destinies of a generation hallelujah the Bible shows us three levels of trust in the Bible the least level of trust that God can accord a man is to trust you with things giving you things is the least level of trust in the spirit things like money things like access to things is the least level of trust the second level of trust is trust over destinies God can give you the trust and make you a custodian he can trust you with destinies men nations the highest level of trust as revealed from scripture that God can accord a man is to trust you with his program literally he puts you to spearhead his agenda that God will say for the next 10 years this is what I want to do in Zaria and I'm putting you in charge of that program I hope someone is learning so celebrating that you have access to things is wonderful but i'm telling you that does not weigh much in the spirit oh i have money i have a good job thank god for that but spiritually speaking mm -mm. you find this in matthew chapter 25 and there are other synoptic accounts we're not going there for the sake of time you find a situation where the first thing he gave them was things talent when they were faithful he now made them head over nations that was the reward they got are we together yes so Jesus looks at his disciples and says I'm sending you as witnesses over Jerusalem Judea 
but among all of them there were a few people who were trusted with his program salvation to the Gentiles was given to one man salvation to it was not given to a group in as much as all of them were sent as witnesses when you mention Paul when you mention John when you mention Peter these were men who were trusted with programs not just things Jesus said I have many things to tell you but he cannot bear them now the many things he wanted to say was what Paul now brought if Paul was not there we would not have an opportunity to hear the many other things Jesus wanted to say do you know what it means to read the Bible without Paul's contribution number one you will not understand redemption reading the Gospels it will take the Pauline epistles to bring perspective because as at the time Jesus was dying they had not received the Holy Spirit in them so their spiritual understanding was still there it was Paul by the Spirit that began to give a sound exegesis of everything that happened the whole book of Ephesians six chapters it was Paul that began to tell us that we were raised up with Christ not even Jesus preached it remember what I taught you three levels of trust things destinies God's program and in every territory God has a program that's why people come to territories and leave every please listen this is a very prophetic message there is something God is doing in Zaria now that he did not do 10 years ago but that that program can be aborted until he finds men that move beyond the realm of being trusted with things to be trusted with destinies and to be trusted with his program every believer who grows holistically you will see these three phases of trust you will start seeing certain manifestation things are working a car is coming this and that and sometimes we get distracted and we feel that's the highest level no there are higher levels of ranking and authority in the spirit where God now trusts you with certain destinies and say under your watch this family must not die under your watch this must not die then a time comes when he measures a thousand cubits and he can trust you with his program now he can send you to regions and reveal to you what he wants to do here I am in your presence do to it's me what you want. want I'm open before you Lord do, do to me what you want. want listen ladies and gentlemen my assignment is to continue to walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit and the Word of God to help you see that there are vast dimensions as far as the work of the believer is concerned that Christianity is not just limited to having things and enjoying things and saying, no oh, this is working for me there are superior needs that even God has the need to see the world evangelization the Bible says and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness and you do not have to be a pastor I have told you prophetically speaking God's end time program is separated into three groups there are prophetic intercessors then there are those who are sent into the cosmos then there are the kingdom financiers this is the tripartite formation of the end time army and every one of us here will play one two or all of these roles I repeat again prophetic intercessors these are people like Anna the prophetess you may never see them out but they are the ones who pray the program of God to come listen carefully and then number two we now have those who are sent into Abarakata I just sense a strong anointing very strong anointing as I just began to talk about this very strong anointing those who are sent that includes pastors, apostles, those who go. That includes entrepreneurs. Please do listen to my message, Redefining Revival. I have said that the revival that is coming is not about the pulpit alone. Because when you read the Bible, it was not only Elijah that walked. There was Daniel. There was Deborah. And all these mantles will find expression in this army. So it's important if you are Esther... 
don't go and take Elijah's training it will corrupt what you will become you must know you must find your parallel in scripture and then follow the training that leads you if you are Esther and you do Elijah's training you will abort your mission in the palace and if you are Elijah and you now do the training of say Gideon no you identify the kind of training by the similitude of the mantle that is following you so if you are Esther start looking for Haggai and Mordecai these are the two people that can make you become the Esther that marries Ahasuerus if you are Elisha make sure you do not make a mistake of looking for Haggai he cannot train Elijah he can only train Esther the challenge is that many of us are going through different patterns of training that does not suit what we are to become so prophetic intercessors that was a digression those who are sent into the mission field and then kingdom financiers the Josephs of Arimathea's the body of Jesus is hanging upon the tree and no every the prayer warriors ministry Anna the prophetess had finished the ministry of the disciples and the women had finished it was only the ministry of the kingdom financier who had influence and had a virgin tomb Joseph had influence with the government of the day and he had a virgin tomb if Jesus were not buried in the tomb we would never be able to say oh grave where is your sting and oh oh death where is your sting and oh grave where is your victory he had to be buried in the tomb if we have only prophetic intercessors the program of God cannot happen fully if we have only people going to the mission field this was the mistake that missionaries did when they came into Nigeria most of them did not have proper prophetic there was no rich bank of prayer and intercession and they just came with sincere evangelical zeal and some of them as soon as they they landed certain lands they did were not even given an opportunity to preach they slaughtered them and they destroyed them because before their arrival by divination the powers that be had seen their coming and because they did not have capacity they brought a sincere gospel but they neglected the formation even Jesus before his arrival prayer had to go before him learn this pattern you can use it for this is true even for any church the ministry of prayer the ministry of doctrine the word and administration and leadership then the ministry of kingdom financing every time this tripart this tripartite pattern is compromised there will be problem in that organization there will be problem in that ministry so if you have people who only pray in a ministry they will never grow because the ministry of doctrine that matures believers is not there you see that now and then if you have a ministry that does not have support systems Aaron's and horse that hold the hand of the man of God they cannot hold the rod but they can hold the hand of the one holding the rod is someone learning so my first admonishment in training you is that you must develop a systematized prayer life it is it is your assignment under God to study different models in scripture different models through modern history there are prayer giants who have joined the cloud of witnesses men like E.W. Kenyon E.M. Bounds you can study their, their, their approach to prayer and then there are those that God has granted privilege we who are now alive and are making our contribution you can study the Bible says to follow them there are always them who through faith and patience have obtained the disciples said we are not just following Jesus for his crusade we want to follow him to that secret place and see what really happens that produces the miracles at the crusade ground the secret of great men is in what they do before the manifestations not the manifestations no. number two the second thoughts that I want to share with you in receiving training tonight is how to be built by the word let's do that very quickly 
So a systematized prayer life, a methodical prayer life where you allocate time or a range of times and as much as possible obtain grace and be disciplined to not compromise on those times and you will watch how your life begins to grow every time you invest in prayer something happens within your spirit man now the ministry of the word how to be built by the word let me tell you this there there are three dimensions as far as being built by the word is concerned just because you have access to the word does not mean it will build you no there are many people who are reading scriptures there are many people who have access to the word but they do not know how to be built by it in acts chapter 20 and verse 32 the bible says and now brethren it says i commend you to god and to the word of his grace the bible says that it is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified it is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified it first builds you then it gives to you are we together in acts chapter 6 and verse 4 still the early church when there was problem between the Grecian women over tables, the apostle said, get 12 people and would we'll ordain them and allow them to handle the matters of welfare. But we will give ourselves continually, the Bible says, to prayer and to the ministry of the word. We will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. I have found out, listen, and by the grace of God, I have studied my Bible and I have studied I. I like to study many of the generals who have joined the cloud of witnesses for some reason I have come to a point to trust the purity of their experiences because they produce dramatic levels of results from their spiritual experiences and I've been able to distill three dimensions of your encounter with the Word of God in order to build you number one is the study of Scripture you want to be built by the word you must study scripture the bible says study to show yourself approved unto god it didn't say wish it didn't say read it says study there is a difference between study and reading the purpose of reading is awareness the purpose of study is understanding there is a difference it will take more than awareness of scripture to be a giant in the spirit you must study scripture so that is the first way to be built by the word you must study scripture number two you must listen to scripture they are not the same the study of scripture and listening to scripture are not the same let me tell you according to the bible the work of the believer is dependent on your eyes and your ears and your mouth there are components in a believer that must participate in your growth many times you will hear the bible say faith comes by hearing it was not a mistake he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit saith to the churches if your ears are not participating in your word encounter i submit to you you cannot be built by the word please try to believe that i'm not deceiving you there are many people who study scripture but they are still not able to be built by the word holistically because they have ignored it i hope you know that before the study of scripture became a possibility it was first hearing holy men wrote before they wrote they had and they saw to write are we together now that model has not changed jesus spent time speaking to them in fact in the parable of the sower watch this the bible lists four kinds of soils and it says the seed is the word of god it says the seed that fell on good ground are those that heard the word they heard the word they received it they acted upon it and even though they heard it they still produced three levels of results 30 fold 60 fold and 100 fold if you are together if we are together say amen you must study scripture if you want to be built by the word number two you must listen listen to scripture and scripture related resources like teachings 
scriptures and scripture related resources i have in my phone here um an mp3 of everything jesus said in the bible from genesis to revelation everything the bible records that jesus said was distilled and sometimes that's all i listen to i want to hear the very words that the bible says from jesus and something happens miraculously it happens to your spirit man listen this is one of the ways that god trained us when we began with god listening those days people would put their cassette it was it was a model many people have compromised on it now you would almost see believers like mad people because once they were moving they, they always had their earphones listening to something a worship to usher you very strong worship and then maybe a message and then maybe a teaching you would almost know that this is a believer's room because there will be a sermon playing while they are cooking a sermon playing now we have ignored the place of hearing and that's the reason why the faith dimension it takes to walk mighty things is no longer there i submit to you you just hear the word allow it sink into your mind you don't just hear for memory you hear to transport it into your subconscious mind are we together yes hearing sometimes you can fall asleep while you are hearing and in the realm of the spirit the hearing continues and your consciousness is being trained now when you wake up you can be having a vision while you are awake and understand the dynamics because something was quickened in your spirit if you can be sleeping and yet still participate how much more when you are awake now god can speak to you as a preacher you can be standing here and you can be caught up in the spirit and your organs of interacting with that realm of possibility has been trained by hearing have you listened to a message before and then you fall asleep and the message is still playing and sometimes it now becomes graphic you are now acting out that message you may wake up under an intense manifestation of god's power i remember those days we, I used to listen to the entire 12 hour CDs of Charles and Francis Hunter, How to Heal the Sick. I would sleep and I would, it would play again and again and again. You put it on repeat until the battery runs down. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus let this mind be in you at age 12 he went to the temple he was asking questions and listening and when satan came to him at age 30 he said it is written it is written it is written there's a man called dr nasir sadiki many of you may have heard about him and he had a a case I think it's called shingles or so years ago and he was diagnosed with an acute case it was a terrible case had brought out boils and swellings in his body and he was left for dead they had told him the doctors had concluded do your best it may not work and he made up his mind as a project with his wife that he was going to listen to scripture as he was taking drugs the same way they say take um, Panadol you know two in the morning two in the afternoon that was how he was listening to scriptures for two years non-stop and that devil dried up and left him till today he's still serving the purposes of God you see I told you that results are preachers there is a sermon only results can preach and when you see people who have gone through the valley of the shadow of death and have come out victorious it is arrogance to argue with them are we together I know what the word of God can do to a man. I give you this as a project. Submit yourself to hearing scripture. Gather relevant teachings. Gather relevant materials. Especially the Bible on tape or MP3. It's free. It's online. Go and get it. And you listen to it. It may not be easy for you to read the 66 books. But you can hear the 66 books. You can hear a chapter in 20 minutes. And repeat it again in one hour you have had that chapter you will think nothing is happening until the day adversity strikes scriptures will shoot out of you like weapons it's true please listen to what i'm telling you most people are not built by the word because number one we do not study the word number two 
we do not listen to the word and then number three we do not speak the word that is the third level of being built by the word the confession of the believer according to scripture is a very powerful thing the confession of a believer the confession of a believer listen ladies and gentlemen you have to learn this the confession of the believer the Bible says let the redeemed of the Lord say so is that in your Bible let the redeemed of the Lord say so let the redeemed of the Lord say so let the redeemed let the healed of the Lord say so many people are not given to the confession of scripture and if you do not confess scripture let me tell you the truth there are many prophetic realities that may never happen in your life the bible says ye have not because he asked not and then part of asking is not just to say give me your faith declarations in the name of Jesus I decree and declare the Lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall I be afraid of in the name of Jesus the Lord is the strength of my life I declare that a thousand shall fall by my side ten thousand by my right side none shall hurt me with my eyes shall I see and I behold the reward of the wicked are we together the declaration of Scripture I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord is at work in my life. I decree and declare, I am like my own Zion that cannot be shaken, but I abide forever. Do not make anybody make you believe that is just childish Christianity. Many have negated this to the detriment of their life. Confession is so powerful, Jesus calls himself the word, the logos of God. I will not be silent. I will always listen. I want you to make it a culture to not just pray but know how the saints are built by the word. I will repeat it for you one more time the study of scripture, the hearing of scripture and word related resources and then number three my goodness my God the speaking of the word like the king that you are he says where the word of a king is there is power in the name of Jesus there is no death and dryness around my life I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit I am a burning and a shining light I go ever brighter even unto the perfect day you are putting your towel to go and bath you may not have had the time to study scripture listen if you are not growing in scripture it means you are lazy because at any given point you can do one of these three if you don't have the time to study you can have the time to hear if you don't have the time to hear you can have the time to speak there is no excuse to not be built by the word most people do not understand this tripartite approach that is the reason why they say i don't have time to study scripture so my word life goes down it's a lie all three should work together don't choose one don't say me i just confess uh -uh. you must study to have understanding you must hear to build your faith you must speak to release your faith to create those possibilities this is what the bible teaches this is what the fathers did i remember those days i used to read tl osborne's book and you want to get his book on soul winning and healing the sick a, a timeless eternal classic there is a group of, of uh, I think groups of faith confessions that he wrote just joining scriptures to scripture are we together the favor of the Lord is upon me in the name of Jesus Christ Gentiles come to my light they are kings to the brightness of my, my rising koinonia goes from glory to glory no decline for the bible says the path of the just is as a shining light the realm of the spirit is bearing witness to your responsibility of confession 
Someone open your mouth in one minute and begin to make faith declarations. Even if it's only one scripture you have, make that declaration. In the name of Jesus, when men say there is a casting down, I declare that for me there will be a lifting up. Is someone praying? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. The Bible says, he leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness, even for his name's sake. Someone is praying. Make that declaration. It's a faith declaration. You are making that declaration by the power of the Holy Spirit. Shanda brakate veretos kia tapalados, krata baka fraska di la parus ke sevrende ke veretos kia ta, e krata paratus kia tale katus kia te. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Let me show you a scripture. I think that should be Isaiah eight twenty. Give it to us. Never forget this scripture for the rest of your life. I want us to read it together. Isaiah chapter eight and verse twenty. Everybody, please read. One to read. To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. That means there is a way you speak as proof that light has entered you. That if we find you speaking not according to this word, the diagnosis is that there is no light in you. That means those who are the light, there is a way you speak not just a way you study i will never speak anything negative about my life i don't care what the situation is in the name of jesus i know while i look at the things that are i look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen the bible says the things that are seen are temporal and the things that are unseen are eternal do you believe this Walking in abundance, moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. I am favored. That I am walking in abundance, moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. I am favored. I am walking in abundance, moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. I am famous. This is what I believe. Before Jesus died, he confessed that he would die and he would come back to life. If he did not speak, he would have been surprised. He would remain in that grave. It was that word that guaranteed his coming back. What have you said about your destiny? You have empowered the forces of darkness because even Satan depends on the word of God to operate. Satan has to hear what God has said to know what to do to believers. Again, I declare I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, my hands are blessed. My life is a compendium of infinite possibilities in the name of jesus this ministry goes from glory to glory serving the purposes of the kingdom in power and in grace prosperity is my portion the favor of god is at work in me i decree and i declare by the power of the holy ghost i'm walking upon that moving with the speed of the holy ghost I am favored. I am walking in abundance, moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. I am favored. When Jonah was in the belly of the fish, every other thing failed. It was his words that brought him out. In the belly of the fish, no hope. Jonah said, every other thing, I, I can't use my hand to fight the fish. I can't use my brain to think my way out. The only thing available that can bring me out is my speaking. 
and that fish vomited him and the bible said it was god that caused the fish to swallow him and jonah used his word and came out of that situation to the point that jesus used the testimony of jonah as an adumbration of his death that means the same way it was the word that brought jonah out jesus made a declaration before he entered the belly of the earth and after three days he rose again the angels did not come because they wanted to come the angels are only mandated to respond to the word of god if there was no word in that equation the angels would not have a ministry can i tell you many people talk about angels you don't tell angels go and walk that's not how you instruct them you the, the ministry of the angels is activated by speaking the word the moment the proceeding word comes they have an assignment let me show you something can i show you something revelations 1 verse 1 i like us to read it together one to read the revelation of jesus christ which god gave him to show to his servants which things must come to pass notice the revelation was what was given and the bible says he sent that revelation and signified it by his angel the angels respond to revelations so as i begin to speak in the name of jesus my tomorrow is great angels like the holy spirit have the power to go into your tomorrow they are not limited by time and space they can go there as ushers doing the bidding of the saints i really believe this when i begin my year i call every month by name and i give it a name i prophesy upon it this week in the name of jesus i prophesy you are a week that delivers favor my life is all about the purposes of the kingdom i go about doing good healing all day that are oppressed because god is with me the anointing of the spirit is at work in me i believe in god's ability at work in me you speak like this and watch how inferiority complex all of these things that came from our backgrounds was it not words that programmed you into that state they told you you would not become anything they looked at you and said you are stupid you are the black sheep or whatever kind of sheep they they look for a deformity around your life and name you i like the man called jabez the mother used her mouth and programmed danger because of her pain she called him jabez but that scripture starts with the end of his story and jabez was more honorable than his brethren when you cannot use your hand when you cannot use your brain when you cannot use your feet use your mouth that every other thing can fail i'm no longer slave to fear i am a child I'm no longer slave to fear. I am a child of God. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with, with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Zaria, hear me. Do not call yourself what God did not call you. He did not call you a failure. He did not call you weak. Man of God, he never told you you will fail. Your lowly estate may speak to you, but respond with the spoken word. Don't just study it, speak it. That in the name of Jesus, my generation will celebrate the hand of God upon my life. I may not look like it, but the mighty hand of God is upon me. His word is has work in my spirit. There is no limit to what I'm able to do. I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. Hallelujah. You do not need money in your bank to speak. You do not need money in your pocket to speak. You do not need a big house to speak. You do not need a mic to speak. You need understanding. Let this become your culture as you are trained. To study the word. To listen to the word. And to speak the word. I give you a guarantee. 
obtain grace to live like this and watch what your life becomes it will look like you held a charm the beauty and the glory of God that begins to emanate you are not the first to stay in one room we all stay there you are not the first to whatever it is time will fail me to talk of Gideon, Jephthah, Barak men who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness shut the mouth of lions women who received their dead back to life maybe there's someone outside maybe there's someone scattered across following online across the globe can I speak to you do not allow anything bring you down for as long as you are able to speak let God be true and every man a liar do you believe this this is how to train believers to be masters over life so next time you see things not going your way humanly speaking you may feel that grief and you may lament but always remember who you are when you are done with all that lamentation and sympathy you wear your priestly regalia and you lock up yourself and say I know better than this I have been trained you open your Bible under an intense atmosphere of worship and let that worship be playing while you are studying and the spirit of grace will now unlock the skill you see opening the book is your responsibility but unlocking the seal is his responsibility you don't have the power the book must be both opened and the seal unlocked for you to see opening the book is your responsibility but unlocking the seal then he will give you one rhema word and with that word you stand up and from the lips of faith you begin to make declarations that don't make sense in the name of Jesus I activate the ministry of my destiny helpers and whilst you are sitting someone who has forgotten you all of a sudden the book of remembrance is open is and it looks like it's just a a coincidence no we program possibilities in our lives based on the word let me give you the last one and then is someone learning no eye has seen no ear has heard what God has prepared for me so I submit to his work in me till Christ is formed in me no eye has seen no ear has heard what God has prepared for me so I submit to his work in me till Christ is formed in me Paul said my little children of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you if you submit to the bidding of the spirit you will be surprised to see the kind of glory that will be revealed in you the bible says there are bodies celestial and there are bodies terrestrial it says even among the stars one different from another in glory you may not differ in size but you can define glory that glory that excels Till the Christ is formed in me Till your glory is revealed in me Your wisdom rests on me Your favor at work in me So I submit to your work in me Till Christ be formed in me Number three. The third and the final charge for this time that we have to share together is the value of spiritual empowerment. This is the last thing I want to talk about in our training and our equipping as we contend to lay hold on eternal life in experience I have given you three keys that represent irrefutable kingdom secrets they are ladders that transit men from realms of defeat and weakness 
that you become a tremendous person of capacity like the mighty men of David the power of a systemic prayer life then how to derive value from the word through your study your hearing your speaking don't forget this then now number three the value of spiritual empowerment most people do not know that to fulfill our kingdom assignments and to advance the kingdom in general skill and human abilities can only take us so far when it has to do with advancing the purposes of the kingdom when it has to do with fulfilling your God ordained assignment please have this at the back of your mind that skill and human abilities can only go so far there is a limit to which skill can go there is a limit to which your ability can get to hallelujah this is where the supernatural comes in this is where the value of empowerment comes in Luke chapter 24 and verse 49 very quickly please Luke 24 49 he says and behold I send the promise of my father upon you but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power the one who is talking to them had given them information revelation but he said that is still not enough you tarry until you are endued with power you need more than a message you need more than an information you need power most believers have the message but they do not have the power to back and to validate the speakings they have been given in Acts chapter 4 and verse 33 I love this scripture the Bible says and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all great grace was upon them all hallelujah when we talk about the power of God when we talk about the anointing please understand that this is not an exclusive reserve to preachers pastors apostles prophets and so no the reason why pastors apostles and preachers seem to be the ones manifesting the anointing is because they are the ones who have the greatest consciousness of it because of the nature of what they do they are aware that if I do not have the anointing things will not work well but the anointing was never in the in the temple everything was anointed everything your business is value but it must be anointed to prosper supernaturally are we together now yes I have learned from scripture I have learned from history I have learned from fathers and I have learned from experience that your Christian experience is only going to be a recycling of pain and embarrassment if you ignore the value of spiritual empowerment please listen carefully you do not have to be a preacher to desire spiritual empowerment you see you cannot produce God's dimension of result using the strength of the flesh God's dimension of results cannot be produced using the strength of the flesh. He says, by thee, I can run through a troop. By my God, I can leap over a wall. How do you run through a troop as one man? Ask the mighty men of David. He stood in one position and brought down 800 people with a sword and the sword refused to leave his hand. Can I tell you, do not downplay what the power of the Holy Spirit can do in the life of ordinary men. We may not seem like much in ourselves, but not after the power comes. Samson, before the arrival of the spirit of might, would act like a normal human being. If Samson was macho, Delilah would not ask him the source of his strength. He was a mysterious man. When that power would come upon him, he would remove a city gate and climb a mountain with it and sit there. How about Elijah who ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab even down to Jezreel? 
the bible is full of mighty men gideon and his 300 men jesus recommended the 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 endowment with power to the disciples who would later become apostles and he said tarry if jesus tells people who he mentored tarry i know that i taught you but you'll be surprised if you just be on your way going you will return back with sad testimonies tarry i have taught you and everything i've taught you is true but tarry until you are endued with power and then the bible says now when the day of pentecost was fully come i'm not sure they knew what they were expecting they just got up that morning wondering wow pentecost so this jesus will keep us waiting here we're not going to go and celebrate this feast it's day 50 now suddenly suddenly the bible says there was a a a mighty rushing wind a sound from heaven will you blow 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 like a mighty wind spirit of victory cover us with your wings will you blow 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 like a mighty wind spirit of victory cover us with your wings upon that weak person blow 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 like a mighty wind spirit of victory cover us with your wings upon that dying family blow 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 like a mighty wind spirit of victory cover us with your wings in genesis chapter 1 and verse 2 the bible says the earth was dark and void watch the spirit of god the custodian of the power of the godhead the administration of spiritual power resides within the office of the holy spirit darkness tohu wa bohu confusion and chaos and the bible says but the spirit hovered round the face of the waters now that power was available and God said and he saw that what he said was good and God said and he saw that what he said was good the ultimate test of spiritual power is found in verse 2 down to 4 when you say and you see and it appears and it is good you have power the zenith of spiritual power is the ability to declare when the centurion came to Jesus and Jesus said I'm coming to your house he said no I may not know much but by reason of my military experience I know this much I am a ruler under the Roman government and I say to one go and he can go and to one come and he can come I know you are under the authority of the government of heaven speak the word only and he said I've not found such faith in other words who taught you this who taught you that this is how the administration of power works in the kingdom? That from one location you can stand. One location you can speak to your house. One location you can speak to your family. One location from one location elijah did not need to go to a radio station from one location there shall be no rain over a period of three and a half years listen to me ministry is going to be frustrating if you do not value spiritual empowerment can i tell you the truth it takes power to be wealthy it's called the power to get wealth not just the common sense to get wealth it takes more than a right mind to be blessed and the bible says strong men retain wealth because retaining wealth is more serious than getting it the easiest part of being wealthy is getting it retaining wealth is proof of power it says strong men retain wealth it takes power to ward off the arsenals of darkness over your family that want to come and destroy everybody 
you've heard people they, they would say ah, our father was a pastor and he died without achieving anything say unto God how terrible are thou in your ways it says through the greatness of your power shall your enemies submit themselves are we together a man woke up one morning and just felt a slight pain very slight pain just like a needle pain around his legs and he just smiled it over and said what is this this pain and by the next time he would sit down he could not stand up straight again this is a true story and his um what they call this thing the kneecap started shaking and vibrating on his own i'm not a doctor i don't know what that meant and he called for help and all of a sudden they started diagnosing this man and they started bringing all kinds of things that from a medical standpoint i was told should take a long time before it degenerates to that state and it happened within a short time because it was sponsored by the presence of his spirit jesus said ought not this woman being a daughter of abraham whom satan has bound these 18 years can i tell you sincerely ladies and gentlemen in this end time hear me if there is no manifestation of the possibilities of the kingdom in and through your life the nations will not place a demand on your grace i can tell you that there is a growing hunger across the earth to see the power and the glory of god displayed once again and power takes more than falling down and standing up the ability to correct the ability to create to establish things in the lives of people isaiah 61 we're ready to pray the spirit of the lord is upon me the bible says because the lord had anointed me the word anointed there is to legitimize to ordain to preach good tidings to the meek listen carefully he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, all by the anointing, to proclaim liberty to the captives, all by the anointing, and the opening of prison to them that are bound, all by the anointing. Verse 2, he says to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, still by the anointing, to appoint unto them. I like this one. You know what it means to appoint? To name the day of their deliverance and victory to appoint unto them that morning Zion to give them beauty for ashes I was teaching in Lagos and I told them beauty is a gift you can give a man beauty that you look at a life that has been battered and shredded into pieces and you come in the name of the Lord and give the person the gift of beauty rewrite the narrative of their family no job no rising no nothing and you come in the name of the Lord he sent me to your home he says every house that you enter if there be a man of peace and they open the door for you he said let your blessing your peace rest that means no man of God and no saint of God walks empty there is always something that goes with you and when it is received it can rest upon people is someone learning I learned the value of spiritual empowerment and I made up my mind that I was going to contend for it. As I read the books of T.L. Osborne, Charles and Francis Hunter, E.W. Kenyon, Papa Hagen, Reinhard Bunker, name them. Those we call God's generals. And the fathers and those that have set the pace for us that we had an opportunity to see their lives. Possibilities beyond imagination. I watched one of... Um, What's his name now? One of these, this, this, this healing evangelists. I can't remember his name now. He's not one of the popular ones. And there was a growth on someone's face and he just held it like this and peeled it. The same way you peel something. Like that. Just removed it. Ah. May God restore us. Oh. May God truly restore us. Because there are dimensions of power that these men accessed in the spirit that we need to pray that the Lord will grant us that grace not for the purpose of self-aggrandizement but that there is a need to validate the speakings of God once again upon this earth 
are you aware of the kinds of sicknesses it's been a burden in my heart in the last maybe two three months that because god gave i had an encounter and god began to speak to me about the restoration of the healing mantle back to the earth i hope you know mantles do not leave the earth no they are there but there is a level of alignment that the saints must assume these men were people you would read their stories and you would think it's an exaggeration I know I was told that Archbishop Benson Ida was of blessed memory they once brought someone for him with a twisted face and to pray for the person and all he did was he told the person look up and when he looked up he said God this man was created in your image if this is how you look leave him like that hmm. don't stand before Pharaoh until you see the burning bush these were men who walked like gods upon the earth. I remember watching one crusade of Charles and Francis Hunter and they were picking people out of wheelchairs as if they were relocating them to act a film. And they were laughing. I said, look how frustrating this is. But a generation will arise. Some of you, you've seen it in your dreams. Some of you, you've seen it in your visions. It's time for the things that you have seen to come alive and to be made manifest in your life. In, do you know what it means if you carry the healing power? Imagine your father and your mother. Think of your loved ones. Forget about a crusade ground. Just think of your loved ones. Someone suffering from prostrate, about to die. Someone suffering from cancer. And now you come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You step into that family with the confidence of a trained believer. Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of God. Hallelujah. You know, many years ago in this area, I've shared the story. I, I think it was a lecture, I can't remember now. Somebody somewhere, and I went to go and pray. He was on a wheelchair. I think something happened whether a degenerative disc or one of these medical conditions and now they heard that God was using a gentleman called Joshua Selman and with every sense of honor and passion they said please come and I went there and they gave me their rapt attention they gathered the whole family and the children I preached a powerful message on the power of God but the problem was that it was now time to demonstrate it and, and the man on the wheelchair, um, um, you know, a man maybe in his 50s or 60s then, you, you could not say he did not have faith. He was paying attention, nodding and saying amen. And then I laid my hands on him. In the name of Jesus, this same Jesus that I've preached, sir, rise up. In the name of Jesus, absolutely nothing happened. Absolutely. I prayed, I prayed, I believed that I had faith. If it fails, it is never God. I took responsibility and went back. There is something I do not know. Let God be true and all men liars. I'm showing you the attitude of a winner. By the time you just have to roll, I'm not God. You would never be able to walk in certain levels of the anointed. You must shrug off the shame and go back. Open my eyes. There has to be something. The mortuary in Shika there. I have entered that mortuary to pray for a dead body. The anatomy lab in Abu Zaria have been left in that lab to pray for a dead body. And while I prayed, none of them came back to life. But I was happy I did. Because you never live the same. There is something about your fear. Leave, letting it out. What is making you afraid? There is a way you will stand and stare at it. You will find out it didn't have the power it claimed to have. Please listen carefully we're wrapping up I remember praying fasting and crying and say Lord I listened to John A.A. A. Allen 
and A. A. Allen said he went to the Lord and prayed and cried and said what is the secret of the miracle working power of God because he read his Bible and when he read it he tried to practicalize what he read and absolutely nothing happened and you see in the world that we live today people are already enlightened it's not like before you can go somewhere and tell people Jesus can move and he doesn't touch them the next thing you see a caught someone and somebody will say you you abuse them emotionally by lying to them <laughs> church there's no time to play games again we have to stay with God and hold on to the four horns of the altar until we carry substance the substance of genuine provable spiritual power hallelujah I remember it was in this same Zaria then phones just started mobile phones as we know and then they, they started um, it was a night call or something like that when they called me and they told me that someone they were waiting for a doctor to come I don't know if it was Shika now or Barodiko one of the medical um, places and the person had had a they mentioned the vertebra the ones that were crushed or something so they were waiting for someone either someone to come from India or something of that sort and they said there is this gentleman again I made up my mind list I failed and failed till my ego died in the year that King Uzziah died there is something that must die for you to see for as long as your purpose of ministering the anointing is to prove a point you carry your ego and it blocks the power of God something must die I got to a point where I said if nobody gets healed I will keep praying for people my ego was stung and stung till there was nothing if you're on the ground there's nowhere to fall again usually that is the point you see his power because now the excellency of power will be of God I remember now looking from today I do not know I can't tell if I really I don't know what kind of faith and courage would have entered me true story I picked the phone and this I think he was a woman I remember she was wearing a, a neck collar and it was a complicated situation and I remember holding the phone it was in the night I said madam in the name of Jesus I want to pray for you and I boldly told her after all I said it many times and it failed I said I will keep saying it while I learn I didn't know that that day would be different five minutes to your lifting it will still not look like it you just continue I held that phone and I told her I said I'm going to pray for you I prayed a simple prayer no sermon no long stories a simple prayer and I told her remove your neck and this woman removed her neck collar and the only thing I remember hearing was that she ran and shouted Jesus and that was it by the next day you know how they come to people's homes like burial burial has happened that was how people if I did not see the x-ray the son had to come the father the husband now of the woman when he heard his wife was healed these are not unverified stories he did not believe it's impossible until he came and saw his wife they brought me the x-ray before after I said that's right truly spiritual power works let me tell you this I remember that time when that news broke out in Shika here the number of nurses and doctors that began to call please I have a pain here I've not shared it with anybody so I now found out people have problems but they will hide it for as long as they suspect you will waste their time the day they find what looks like genuine answer they will open up their scars sincerely the reason why it looks like men are not placing a demand upon your grace is nobody wants to open the deepest secrets of their pain when they know you will not solve it that's why a patient can go to a doctor and somebody old enough to be that doctor's father you will still pull for surgery you will still and you will not be ashamed because you know the doctor will take care of you if they say turn around let them inject you you will not say I'm embarrassed I'm a woman we're a man that is none of the doctor's business you want to be healed of malaria you do what he's asking you to do the reason why people cover up and don't speak is because it looks like in the church they, they, are, they are tired of just saying amen without power but the good news is that it's restoring again.
God himself is restoring ancient mantles and is restoring genuine spiritual power how will we go to the nations of the earth and preach Jesus to a bedeviled world that has several options no the Bible says Philip preached Christ in Samaria Acts chapter 8 from verse 5 it says the people gave heed in one accord, with one accord hearing and seeing verse 6 the miracles which he did hearing and seeing in the kingdom we hear and we see we do not just hear we see I made up my mind that for as long as I'm alive and Koinonia hear me for as long as you are part of this apostolic and prophetic ministry it will take more than revelation you must contend for this third dimension the power of the Holy Spirit the power of the Holy Spirit is not for Joshua Selman this promise is unto you and to your children your children's children even as many as are far off those that the Lord will call when it has to do with the power of the Holy Ghost, great grace was upon them all. It's time to start going to your families. It's time to go to your, maybe your, your rooms, your offices, and now begin to manifest as light and salt indeed. This talk, we keep talking and shouting amen for nothing must come to an end. Can I tell you the truth? Everybody you see that God used mightily in Zaria, for those of you who just came to Zaria not long ago, the heritage that you celebrate in Zaria came about by the stories that you are hearing. Different stories from different men of God at points of encounters and the corresponding power that came upon their lives. My prayer is that Zaria will not stop remaining a training ground. This is a place where people came as ordinary people I remember those days you will see tiny ladies in the cold they will wear their stockings and carry their rechargeable in the night on their way to long tennis courts then most people will not know it now but you will see them with their tiny voices for hours praying in the spirit later on you find out that that tiny girl has now become a campus fellowship president fire like you will see somebody looking so small but you sit under that kind of anointing the service will finish you will not even know there is a generation that is losing out on the patterns celebrating all kinds of things it's not by going online it's not by doing all of these things you must stay the ministry of prayer many years ago in zaria night time was a time of small recreation that graduates into prayer people gathered together and the gist was still spiritual talk it was not just like it was nonsense you start talking sharing things questions and from there before you know it people get into the zone of prayer that is how the mighty were made precious people do not lose that pattern you lose that pattern you will see the darkness and onslaught you see all this armed robbery and kidnapping that is happening in Zaria do not sit helpless as if you can do nothing you do not know that the people who do these things negotiate with the spirit to embolden them to come out and manifest. Nobody unassisted has that kind of courage to watch another human being and kill the person. No. Until the saints rise and begin to define the realities that happen within your spiritual borders. In the name of Jesus for darkness, that thus far have you come, no further shall you come shall you go i remember times when we had to stay and pray certain things out of this region you would hear crisis happening around kaduna state and the rest and while we're interceding for that one to stop we'll stand and declare that it shall not be he says i will stand upon my watch and i will set myself upon the tower now the challenge is that many people are only praying one over three will not get the job done you see where the mistake is because it is the excellency of the word in you that helps you to pray effectively now many people ignore the word they ignore the power of the holy spirit and all people do is to pray and it is largely praying amiss a dissipation of intense spiritual energy but very little result there must be this tripartite balance is someone understanding this he is brooding over every darkness you are causing light to shine from darkness the holy ghost is brooding 
over every darkness. Hear me, before students get admission, whether to ABU or the Polytechnic, anywhere, we used to pray in advance before they arrive. We begin to pray and intercede. Father, they are coming from several families. They are welcome, regardless whether it's from a family of idolatry, you send them here. Some of them, as soon as they land, from day one, they step into a church having a program just to stroll not knowing that prayer had been put to direct them and some of those people later became fellowship presidents some of them today are men and women of God serving the purposes of God but it is not just limited to producing pastors there were people who it was the church that showed them their direction today they are entrepreneurs advancing the kingdom in many regards they came from a family of low self-esteem came from villages of all sorts but when they sat down under a teaching priest line upon line a sound exegesis of scripture they now began to understand who they were in Christ and the possibilities that would come by reason of this way life and things began to change never lose that pattern if you're a campus fellowship president here hear me whilst you study and do what you do remember that you have an assignment do not leave this region without replacing yourself. No. Otherwise, the devil will be patient and allow a group of vibrant, serious people to leave. And then you will find out that all that is left is nothing to write home about spiritually. This is what you see happening in many circles. Vibrant people, but there is no succession. No raising men and women of fire. It is the reason why you see us continue to invest in training because for as long as Jesus lives this place will remain a training ground where God is raising people you see these are little children some of them were dedicated right here and now you see them as small as they are while we are praying they are joining to pray too watch what happens to them by the time they become teenagers they will be light years they would outdo the things the little that we have done and that's how it's supposed to be let me charge you before we pray finally parents you have a role to play in preserving this revival young people you have a role to play in preserving this revival ministers of the gospel we have a role to play businessmen we have a role to play this is a time where everybody must put his hands on deck from Zaria and around Zaria to the ends of the earth Jesus must be revealed and Jesus must be glorified. We will never allow darkness to prevail. We will never allow decadence, kidnapping, assassination. Right now, people cannot go home freely in the night again. What kind of thing is that? Because some teenager somewhere under the influence of a wicked demonic spirit. Let's submit our prayer request. And then we'll do the impartation. We've taken time. Please begin to pray in the spirit right where you are and submit your prayer request to the person at the left or the right aisle seated to you. Any one of them, preferably maybe the left. Please submit your prayer request while you pray. All the overflows, those outside, those across. Please make sure you attend to those who are around Second Equa. Make sure that they are given an opportunity to submit their request. Submit your request while you pray. The Bible says to be anxious for nothing. It says, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Oh Lord, set my heart on fire for you, for you. Oh Lord, will you put my life in order for you, for you. I want to know you, Lord. 
I want to know your ways. Oh Lord, set my heart on fire for you, for you. I want to know your ways. Just one prayer request. Father, I am available to be used mightily by you. I pray that you will use me like never before. Open your mouth and pray. Whether in ministry, whether as a lecturer, whether as a student, whether as a husband, a wife, a father, a son, a daughter, a career person, a professional, open your mouth and pray. I am available. I am available. I am available in the name of Jesus. I am available by the power of the Holy Ghost. I am available as you raise mighty men and women as you anoint men for this end time kingdom assignments i am available find a vessel in me in the name of jesus christ now pray and declare i obtain grace to be prayerful i obtain grace to be systemic even in my prayer i obtain grace to be a student of scripture are you praying i obtain grace by the power of the holy ghost to listen to scripture to listen to teachings i obtain grace to speak the word faith declarations that speak and program possibilities over my life declare the power of the holy ghost upon my life the power of the holy ghost upon my ministry the power of the holy ghost upon my family the power of the holy ghost upon my body the power of the holy ghost upon my children is someone prayed the power of the holy ghost upon my academics the power of the holy ghost upon my career in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare it is not by power not by might it is by the spirit hallelujah hallelujah so this is how it works when the power of the holy spirit comes upon you the bible says christ is revealed as the wisdom of god and it is revealed is revealed as the power of god when the anointing comes upon you it can translate to wisdom guiding you to know what to do and it can translate to the force that corrects every anomaly in your life hallelujah our time is gone we're going to spend just about maybe five minutes max ten by the grace of god i like you when you're ready with the request please bring them and then i will speak over your life i promised yesterday that i was going to pray for the sick we may not have time to take testimonies unfortunately because of our time but i will speak over your life then i'll pray over the request We'll do the final impartation and then we are done but hear me ladies and gentlemen if there is anything about this life that you are seeing I'm a product of God's grace but it is also because I place value on the power of God the ministry of strategic prayer being built by the word and then embracing the engracing, the ever increasing empowerment of the spirit. Because you see, yesterday's excellence will be tomorrow's mediocrity. Just because you received fire yesterday does not mean it will suffice for the rest of your life. Some of you, you are here, you came for this meeting yesterday and today weary, dried up in your spirit. 
but the Bible says until the spirit be poured upon us from on high then the wilderness will be counted for a fruitful ground vine and a fruitful vine be counted for a forest there is no limit to what the Holy Spirit is able to do I see several of you just standing across as far as you can get wherever you are I want you to release your faith as I pray you will be changed his glory will be revealed when the spirit takes over your soul truly you will be changed his glory will be revealed when the spirit Like you to stretch your hands towards this request as we pray this is the most accurate representation of the needs of everyone Jesus said it is the sick that need the doctor some of these needs here represented are life-threatening issues some of these issues represented here are issues of shame and embarrassment I like you to declare these that I see these Egyptians I see them no more forever. I'm going to bow my knees to pray. You don't kneel, you just pray. Just for two minutes to lay my hands upon them. Everybody, whether you are outside, you are falling from across the globe, stretch your hands and begin to pray. Pray in the spirit and decree and declare. says unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come in the name of Jesus I bow my knees in partnership with all the graces here represented and we declare under this corporate anointing that every request that has been placed before the Lord here let it become your testimonies now shout a louder amen let it become your testimonies now in the name of Jesus every life-threatening situation here i decree and declare you become a testimony now every spirit that is back of the tragedies here represented by the blood of the eternal covenant we curse you and we declare a release for god's people and finally in the name of jesus prophetically i stand upon this request every challenge that has risen above you we bring it under your feet we bring it under your feet we bring it under your feet in the name of jesus christ now very quickly everywhere inside or outside i want you to place your hand if you came here sick or you brought someone sick lay your hands we're out of time but i have to do this lay your hands where you are trusting god for a miracle if it's a part of your body you cannot touch just make contact with your chest and you can stand in for someone it doesn't have to be for yourself 
there's someone that comes to mind you can stand in to receive from them for them the centurion stood for his son jarius stood for his daughter i sent my word and it healed your disease i am the lord your healer. place your hand there i want to pray for you he gave us the power and the authority to declare upon the sick and that they be healed now in the name of jesus every spirit and every devil of infirmity that has plagued families plagued destinies in the name of jesus christ and by the blood of the eternal covenant i command that that spirit leaves your body now i command that that spirit leaves your body now now i declare to you in the name of jesus be healed from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet be healed now be healed now my god there's such a strong healing anointing be healed now i condition be healed now ear conditions be open now bone conditions in the name of jesus be corrected now blood conditions genotype issues all kinds of blood conditions be healed now be healed now fibroids and all kinds of malignant growths in the name of jesus be healed now we command that those growths die and dissolve from your bodies in the name of jesus christ cancer and any cancer related case we command that cancer cell to die now every genotype you desire change i declare that it changes supernaturally now back pain severe back pain let it be healed right now there's someone you have very severe pain one of your molars in fact it's, it's almost like you have it's a cavity problem but it's it's an advanced state there's severe pain you can literally choke something in there in the name of jesus let that teeth be supernaturally filled now there is there is a man here your situation this is something that that relates to men and this thing has affected you and affected your marriage i declare in the name of jesus let there be supernatural restoration for you now supernatural restoration now in the name of jesus the lord is showing me someone who is suffering from pile pile very painful pile sometimes you are not able to go to the toilet in the name of jesus be healed right now and anyone here appointed unto death we declare and declare that your life is lengthened by the spirit of god every ailment whether every ailment whether i mentioned it or not be healed from it now be healed from it in the name of jesus and for all those you are standing in for i declare that the power of god touches them right where they are in the name of jesus christ i prophesy over your life in the name of jesus every door that has been closed over you i command that door to be opened now god has declared unto us that this is our year of open doors i declare doors be open now in the name of jesus for those who are students i prophesy upon you extraordinary intelligence by the spirit extraordinary intelligence by the spirit 
in the name of Jesus Christ and for anyone here who has been going through patterns and circles of demonic activities witchcraft and all kinds of satanic manipulations you are hereby delivered forever you are hereby delivered forever you are hereby delivered forever in the name of Jesus Christ I declare over Zaria the reign of wickedness which the activities of evil people let it come to an end right now we make decrees this is by the decree of the watchers by the power of the Holy Ghost this environment becomes unconducive for any satanic activity in the name of Jesus we pray for all the churches that are represented here in Zaria every church represented let there be fresh fire upon the altars in the name of Jesus Christ Zaria remains a place of salvation remains a place of training remains a place of revival in the name of Jesus Christ I declare over your finances by the power of the Holy Spirit let the grace called favor rest upon you 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 in the name of jesus christ hallelujah now the final impartation i want to pray for you you don't have to bring anyone out if anyone is under the anointing just guide them we don't have that time now but I want to pray there will always be people who are called to take there are many empty positions in the spirit in Zaria because many people have moved and some of those positions are crying for men and women who will stand and continue what is being done you see the days of superstar Christianity of one person trying to this over the Lord is raising as many not just one person you know and all of that because if only a few people are there they stand the risk of suffering pride and temptation and once they fall out of the way that's the end of it when God raises many people it is beneficial even for those who are there because it takes away the tendency to be tempted with pride and to believe I'm the only one hallelujah there are many people who are rising from the campuses to the various churches I just want to release this grace upon you and it will rest upon you because for some of you this grace will quicken you into a place of retreat for some of you this grace will quicken you to a place of prayer some of you this grace will come to activate many possibilities right now in the name of Jesus by the anointing of the Spirit inside all the overflows overflow three two one the extension at the count of three I decree and declare the grace and the mantle that is required for this season in the name of Jesus Christ receive it right now one two three take that grace now take that grace now take that grace now I activate that grace the spirit of prayer and supplication receive it right now receive it right now the mantle of a prayer warrior the grace to pray and pray down revival receive it in the name of Jesus Christ the spirit of revelation access to light from scripture I release that anointing upon you right now in the name of Jesus Christ I stir up the prophetic and the apostolic every dumb and grace the eyes that see and the ears that hear may that grace be quickened from within you now I decree and declare kingdom financiers rising with the dignity of kingdom integrity received apakatoshka embrekatoshka i release that grace saria you shall not lack may god raise men with the dignity of kingdom integrity that will supply resources for kingdom advance in the name of jesus christ i pray concerning 
the worshippers those called into the ministry of psalmistry prophetic psalmistry whether you are inside or outside i stir up that grace after the order of david receive that mantle now receive that apakatoskata breke parakoskea manta breketasiata songs of the spirit songs of the spirit receive it in the name of jesus I pray for all those who are being raised by God to be the next lecturers the next career people in the name of Jesus let the spirit of excellence rest upon you let the spirit of excellence rest upon you let the spirit of excellence rest upon you in the name of Jesus let the spirit of excellence rest upon you There are some of you here by age 30 you are already professors in the name of jesus such a display of unusual excellence a level of mental acumen as has never been seen i pray for every family here represented let no family in zaria let no family here represented lack a priest that can rise in that family in the name of jesus christ and hear me if there is any of your loved one who is not saved whether your brother whether your sister whether your spouse whether your child whether your parents we agree right now as the church of the lord jesus christ beginning from tonight may the spirit of god begin to convict them even unto salvation convict them even unto righteousness in the name of jesus christ finally the spirit of bloodshed the spirit of untimely death over and around this region parakatos kadibalata in the name of jesus christ we declare that that reproach is rolled over zaria rolled over the body of christ for in jesus mighty name we pray hallelujah now listen very carefully there are thousands of people scattered across this place and thousands others falling online i want you to lend me your attention this is my last night with you for now and i want to make an altar call you know what an altar call is an altar call is a moment of genuine surrender and reception of the life of jesus please no movement minimize movement inside and all the overflows you've been here and whilst you heard me speak the holy ghost began to convict you that you are that champion that god is raising that you are that person that god wants to greatly use but you see everything in this kingdom starts with god jesus is the way i told you earlier on there are some of you who have never truly surrendered your heart in truth you have not made that determined decision to begin a walk with god or there are those who for whatever reason your life has gone haywire and you want to rededicate your life in this auditorium and all the overflows listen to me the Bible says in the day that you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Jesus Christ is giving you an opportunity to make it right. I'm going to count one to five like I did yesterday. All those who are within this auditorium who are saying, Apostle, I want to make it right with Jesus and in truth. I'm going to be inviting you to come and stand here. And then if the space is still available, maybe a few more from outside who are coming can stand. Once this space is filled up, you may move to your LED, your various LED screens. Now for those who are scattered down to second equa, you may want to take advantage of overflow two or overflow three or overflow four. You can use any one of them. But I'm going to count one to five. Leave your seat wherever you are and come and stand to make it right with Jesus. I begin my counting now. One. Celebrate them as they come. Make sure you don't sit back when the Holy Ghost is speaking to you come he's able to give you a new life hallelujah let's celebrate them they are coming from everywhere outside inside 
Nina Yesu ni bazankoma bazankoma baya Nina Yesu ni bazankoma bazankoma baya na sa hanuna akanke no ma bazankoma I belong to Jesus, never going back, never going back, some, some. Nina Yesu ne bazan koma, bazan koma baya. Thank you so much for making this noble decision. It's the wisest decision any man can make under the sun. Hallelujah. Please, ushers, help those who are outside to move right to the LED screens and let your attention be on the screens as I lead you to pray. It is a marvelous thing to see souls come to Jesus. Nothing compares to it. No kind of miracle compares to the miracle of a saved life by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible declares that there is no other name under heaven given unto man by which we must be saved. That whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord that person shall be saved thank you very much for making this noble decision ladies and gentlemen the Bible says whoever will come to Jesus young old rich poor that he will in no wise cast away the front is filled up please the remaining people can now join those in front if he's filled up they can take advantage of any of the overflows praise the name of the Lord thank you very much May I request all who have come out indicating the desire for salvation, please lift your right hand high above your head, your right hand everywhere. And for those who are following, whether you are following from the US, from Europe, from Africa, some state in Nigeria, in the silence of your room, your living room, probably you are watching by way of rebroadcast. This is an opportunity to make Jesus Lord of your life. As I lead them to pray, I want you to repeat that prayer not just as a poem or a chant but a declaration of faith and the Bible declares that salvation will be administered to you say this after me say Lord Jesus one more time say Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I believe that you are the son of God I believe that you died for my sin I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior my Lord and my King and I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever I am a child of God I walk in the newness of life amen father in the name of Jesus I thank you for these ones by the authority of scripture I declare their sins forgiven and in the name of Jesus I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God I declare that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and in the name of Jesus the life of God is ministered to you right now the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over your life I commend you to the Word of God and even to the ministry of the Holy Spirit may you be grounded and established in righteousness you go forward ever and backward never Satan has no hold over your life for in the mighty name of Jesus we pray and the church say a loud amen. amen now very quickly ladies and gentlemen I want to encourage you to just move to the back there are counselors waving their hands there are quite a number of you you'll just move in concert they will have a word with you very quickly and then you'll be back to your seat any of the aisles you can use your left or right any of them will take you to the same place may God bless you let's honor them let's honor them very quickly hallelujah koinonia is this the best you can do hallelujah in the name of Jesus Christ I want to thank all the pastors all the leaders parents and all those who have come
to grace are coming and this this moments this this program that we've had may the lord bless you and honor you in the name of jesus let's share the grace together in fellowship as we close the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore amen surely god's goodness and mercies follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen god bless you hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.